We've got more shop upgrades, an update on my collaboration project, and stickers all coming up right here, so stick around. Well, hello everyone. Today is Monday, May 30th. Welcome to a special Memorial Day edition of Shop Talk. My name is Mike and I'd like to welcome you to my workshop. So before I get started, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all of those who have served in our military, particularly those who have served and given the ultimate sacrifice of their life. I have been blessed to live in a wonderful military community and I'm so thankful uh, for those who are willing to, to give up their lives to serve our country, uh, to protect our freedoms that we enjoy each and every day. So thank you so much and thank you to those families of those who have served and have lost their lives. We set aside this day each year to remember those and hopefully you will take a moment to reflect upon the freedoms that we enjoy in this country and think about those who have given that ultimate sacrifice. Happy Memorial Day everyone. So today is Monday and I'm spending some time out here in the shop just kind of looking around and seeing what all kinds of things I need to, to clean up uh, in preparation for my collaboration project. Here in about two weeks, um, I've got a friend who's coming up to spend a couple days with me here in the shop and I'm really looking forward to this collaboration for a number of reasons. One, I really enjoy other woodworkers uh, coming into my workshop. I've had uh, a couple of folks in my shop here over the past few weeks. One was Mike Walls, who's, um, he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he is on Instagram and he's a woodworker and he lives here locally. So I welcome in him into my shop and uh, more on that in just a minute. And the other was Donnie Carter. Um, Donnie has a YouTube channel, uh, Woodcraftery, and he spent a few hours in my shop here this past week and hopefully you had a chance to watch that video. I'll leave a link in the description below. But we just had a really great time getting to know each other, visiting. Donnie's just a super great guy, uh, a lot of fun to be around and so I look forward to say, seeing him again soon. So Go check him out, give him a follow on Instagram and subscribe to his channel. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. So I do have a couple of upgrades I mentioned here in the last uh, shop update that I had received uh, one of my Shapton stones and this was the 5000 grit. So this past week I also uh, received the 1000 grit stone. This is the second uh, stone that I've received. I've also got a 320 grit stone and I'm contemplating an 8000 grit stone but not sure if I'm going to um, get one of those or not. We'll see. Also thinking about a diamond stone for flattening these ceramic stones. I've seen several woodworkers that, that do that. So I'm really getting excited getting all of this sharpening equipment in my shop. Um, I've also, I've got one of these inexpensive Harbor Freight diamond honing blocks. Looking forward to, uh, you know, trying that out on some of my rough uh, chisels that are not really great, but you know, kind of the, the ones that get beat up. And I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to use this uh, honing guide by Veritas. Really the project that I'm extremely looking forward to is my workbench. So I've mentioned before that I purchased the, the plans for the um, Samurai Carpenter workbench. If you're not familiar with that, you should check, check out his channel. And he's got uh, you know these plans for sale on his site. And I've just been flipping through these plans over the last couple of weeks, kind of looking at things, doing some calculations on board footage, what I'm going to need, um, looking at what I have in mahogany, this maple board that Mike brought me, uh, the walnut, just trying to figure out exactly uh, where to get started, what uh, type of material I need. And what I'm really excited about is uh, I, something I kind of proposed to, to Mike. Uh, so he's actually thinking about or, or has decided to build this very same workbench, purchased the plans um, after speaking with me and after visiting me in the shop and I said well hey you know why don't we build it together I think that would be a great opportunity to to collaborate on that project and so even though he's not on YouTube um, you know I would love to have a partner in crime so to speak here in the shop building this thing together. So he took me up on the offer and I'm looking forward to getting started on that really soon. Um, we'll probably start by just purchasing the hard rock maple uh, by the, the supplier that I found down on the south end and 
we'll get that in here and, and get started at least on the tops and then see what we can do with uh, what lumber he has and what lumber I have uh, to start moving forward. So super excited about building that because that'll be an opportunity for me to really start to, to begin using more hand tools, which is something that I've really desired to do. So stay tuned for that. It's coming. And this week's tool segment is going to be on my table saw. So let's take a moment to switch gears and take a look at my saw. Okay, so this is my table saw that I have here in the shop. And I've owned this table saw for about 10 years, 10 or 11 years. And I purchased it at local home center. And it's basically, at that time, was kind of one of the, I guess, top of the line, I use that term a little bit loosely, um, saw that you could get is basically as a contractor type saw um, without going to a more uh, semi or professional type cabinet saw. And so I think at the time this saw cost me about uh, $550 or somewhere around there. And it is the Hitachi uh, C10FL uh, model number. And again, it is a 10 inch table saw. Of course, it's a single phase, just plugs into a standard 120 volt outlet. And all in all, I've been fairly pleased with this saw. Now I have made some upgrades and I'll talk a little bit about those. Uh, but in general, the saw um, has been a good saw. There are several things that I don't particularly like about the saw that are kind of a nuisance. Uh, more so than anything and that's basically just in, in the overall construction so we'll talk about those. So one thing in particular that is very um, more of a nuisance than anything is how you adjust this saw and so it's got uh, this arm here that you uh, rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise and that loosens the loosen. nut and this nut you can adjust the bevel of the saw by cranking this other handle over here and it's just very uh, difficult to do it's very difficult to adjust the the handle because of the way the gear drive is set up in there these handles have a tendency to come loose all the time um, just a number of things and and this is just it's just really difficult to to make any adjustments so typically I try to avoid having to adjust the uh, the angle of the blade if if at all possible um, because of that and one kind of flaw I guess in the design is once you get to around 45 if you go too far sometimes it can be very difficult to get back um, because there seems to be a little bit of a catch there at the end of that gear the way it the mechanism works inside. Oh, yeah. That's one thing that's just really uh, disappointing in, in the makeup of this saw. Uh, but other than that, um, it does have a full uh, 0 to 45 degree travel, which most table saws do have. So over here on uh, the, the right uh, extension of the table saw, you see I have built in this um, extension wing. And this was just something that that I designed uh, very loosely th thrown together. Uh, it's basically just a pine uh, structure with some like one by material underneath for, for support of the structure. And then it's got a piece of, I believe, three quarter inch plywood as well as a piece of um, hardboard or uh, yeah, I call it hardboard. It's about 3 16th inch thick. Um, not really melamine, but it's more like the uh, fiberboard. I call it hardboard, but masonite, I think, is the technical term for it. And I've waxed the surface. Of course, it's all chewed up right now. And you can see I still have the, uh, the router bit in there that I destroyed and using uh, when I was trimming the sheet metal for that one particular project. Down below, you see I've got this box here where I included this... Uh, paddle switch for stopping and starting the router as well as a variable speed control that I purchased from Harbor Freight that works well you can switch between um, on and off or variable speed control and back behind it that is actually the router lift uh, I believe that design was by John Hines um, maybe it was just the way I built it but I've had some difficulty with that particular um, design and let's see if I can get you a little bit better shot of it here. Yeah, this uh, particular, it's got a, um, a lead screw that goes into uh, a block. And 
you rotate that handle, it does have a uh, stop mechanism, a block that can tighten. That portion doesn't really work all that great. I don't know if, if maybe I did something wrong when I was building this. Um, and it's a little bit clunky as far as uh, adjusting the height of, of the bit. But the main uh, problem that I've had is the bit moving and having a tendency to move on the threads. And so um, it's worked for me in a pinch, but uh, I think at some point I'm going to have to uh, redesign. Then along with this variable uh, speed control here, there's also, I have a, a, a pedal switch here uh, that I can have this on and set to variable or full speed. And then I can control, um, oh, that was on there. No, it's not plugged in. Um, I can control the uh, powering on of the router with that foot control switch. So that's kind of convenient. So this is the fence that I built uh, for my router table. Basically, I just took some pine uh, from an Ikea system that I found on the side of the road and uh, just kind of kind of design this on my um, on a SketchUp pad of paper. I've got some thumb screws in here with wing nuts that uh, they are recessed into this front fence just enough um, so that this is, is flush and doesn't interfere with the piece that's traveling. But you can adjust these thumb screws in the back and slide each of these in and out to, to get kind of a, almost a zero clearance opening there. And so that's very uh, a very easy adjustment that you can make. And then back here, there are two holes uh, that you can see here and here. And those holes are for my uh, Rockler uh, clamps. And so basically, if you've not seen these before, they are just a uh, piece of aluminum stock. They've got this handle and thumb screw and then this pin that screws into the other end and so this I added this little plywood kind of a, a foot here that adds a little bit of stability to the arm the first one I built I didn't have wrapping around that block but I thought well this would be a better design and I just never went back and built the second one but basically how these work is this pin slips into this hole and that allows you this uh, clamping mechanism to clamp right onto your table saw fence. And so what I have is it will kind of rest over this fence and I can take those two clamps and tighten them to the fence like so. And then as I adjust my fence, this is stationary. Now the one kind of uh, flaw in this design, if you will, is when you tighten this clamp to the fence, this fence has a tendency to, to rock backwards because of the force of the clamps. And so um, ultimately what that causes is this surface is no longer orthogonal to the table. And so it's, it's, it's not precise but it does work for me. Work. Uh, and then I made these little pins here out of some uh, bolts that I just cut the, the head off there of the bolt and I had the threads, I cut them off. And I've got some inserts in the table here and these pins can just thread down into those inserts and that gives you a point to pivot. And I have one there and one over there as well. Lastly is the uh, fence itself. So this is not the, the fence that uh, came with the table saw because the fence that actually came with the saw was not a very good uh, quality fence. I had a number of issues with that fence, primarily with uh, maintaining a, you know, completely parallel to the blade. And my saw is unplugged. If I measured from the front, from the blade to the fence, um, I would get one measurement and if I measured from the back of the blade to the fence, I'd get a different measurement. So I had a little bit of play and I never could seem to 
to get that uh, worked out. Now this is the Vega Professional fence. Um, I can't remember exactly how long uh, this fence is, but it's obviously a little bit longer. Rocker arm mechanism here for locking down and that works pretty well. It also has this kind of little mini uh, micro adjustment uh, feature on the end for just making some, some small adjustments. I never really utilized that um, feature. And um, the other nice thing about this fence is the additional uh, capacity that it gives me. And so if I move this fence all the way out on, oh, I think I locked that, all the way out onto the rail, I think I have about 40 inches of rip capacity, which is really much more than I need. You can go to the left of the blade as well and you have I think about 13 inches of rip capacity on that side. On this side I just have the um, the stock uh, extension wing uh, mounted to the end of this plate although there is no real support for the end of it. I just left it on there to have a little bit of additional um, off off table support there. So um, of course it's got two two miter slots in the cast iron top and I have made uh, these zero clearance uh, inserts and so this is just some more of that pine from uh, from the Ikea piece that I picked up. Um, these particular uh, splitters are the, the MJ splitters. Uh, those are a product of um, Microjig and I've, I've been really pleased with with how these work. Uh, basically my saw does not have a riving knife. It's got a splitter that's kind of a nuisance or cumbersome to uh, attach and remove uh, depending on you know what you're doing and so uh, the, what I've found is these these work fairly well to prevent uh, the boards or whatever you're splitting from coming together and pinching on the blade and so I've got several of them depending on the, the, the kerf of the blade that I'm using so that's a thin kerf blade one there and then this one is um, a little bit thicker kerf uh, kind of a standard curve blade. Uh, lastly are some of these um, accessories. So I've shown you the the uh, the clamps, the Rockler clamps that I use to support my uh, um, fence there for the uh, router table. Also it, you can actually use these same clamps for a sacrificial fence um, added to your, your fence. Um, I also use the, the gripper uh, by Microjig and I use this quite a bit. I like this uh, additional fence on here that you can adjust the height based on the thickness of the piece. If you want to maintain good support onto the table, you set this on your block and adjust the height down to, to sit flush on the table. So I use that quite a bit. Um, occasionally use this featherboard. This is a uh, bench dog featherboard. But um, don't use it as much as, uh, as I thought I would when I purchased it. I've also got this little old shop made. Now I didn't make this. I think my uh, stepfather made it. And um, I, I use that as well from time to time. So, so as far as uh, workflow in my shop, as you can see, the table saw is, is sort of the centerpiece in my shop. Um, it shares that with my assembly table, which is uh, just to the right on the camera, um, but I have uh, ample room to move around this table saw. I do have uh, my 14 inch bandsaw over in that back quadrant, but it is on a mobile base and I can move it away as needed. Um, as far as dust collection, I've got this drop that's directly behind the table saw off to the, to the right of the fence and there is a blast gate there uh, that can easily be reached from the ground and there's a four inch flexible drop uh, back to a kind of a Y fitting that allows me to connect to both the, the router uh, lift mechanism. It's got a dust collection port on the back of it as well as a, a two and a half inch line I think that comes to the bottom of the table saw itself and this table saw does have kind of a, a, a dust uh, shroud underneath with a two and a half inch port and so overall that works fairly well. 
uh, for my needs. Um, of course, depending on what you're doing here, if, if I'm using the uh, crosscut slit or, or some other type of jig, then my dust collection may not be quite as effective. I really need to uh, look at splitting off that router uh, table from the table saw because when it's working there's really no way to to turn one off and so I'm always kind of split between the table saw and the router table. Now I can cover up this port that the uh, router bit comes out and I can you know improve improve the uh, the suction by doing that but it still is um, is going to two separate ports and so that's not quite as efficient but um, now the last thing is this uh, 11th finger. Of course, I try to keep uh, a couple of push blocks. I've got this one as well as uh, uh, a variant of J Bates' this push block that I keep down here. Um, and uh, this is just handy because it sticks to the saw. But definitely always try to maintain some sort of push block close by the table saw so I can have that when I need to uh, safely push something to the saw. So, so overall, I've been pleased with the saw for what it's worth. Um, it's been a good saw for me. It does have some pros and cons. I mentioned the adjustment of the bevel of the blade and different things like that. Um, the the uh, fence that came with the saw, not the greatest uh, in terms of precision work, but overall, it's been a good saw. Would I purchase it again? Uh, knowing what I know now, I probably would not have purchased this saw, um, primarily because looking ahead, you know, your table saw is one of the workhorses in your shop. Um, at least for me, it is. It's it's one of my go-to tools uh, for different projects that I'm working on. And so, um, in retrospect, I probably would have spent uh, a little more time saving up for a more robust saw that would last me longer. So I think that kind of goes without saying in terms of tools. Um, you can either purchase something quickly to get to get going or you can take your time to save up uh, for what you really need. Either way, um, I got good use out of this saw and I'll either give it away uh, to someone who doesn't have a saw or possibly sell it on Craigslist or something at a greatly reduced price uh, at some point in the future when I get a new saw. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I've been getting some really good feedback about the tool segment, so I plan to continue doing that. Uh, thanks again to Nate for suggesting that. I plan to do more of a traditional shop tour and kind of give you a walk around the shop so that you can see kind of the workflow and how I have things arranged. Uh, but before I leave, I wanted to share some stickers uh, with you that I received this past week. Uh, Pete Dettore, I hope is uh, how you pronounce that name. So Pete at Dettore Furniture sent me a sticker and a nice note and you can check him out on Instagram. He makes some really nice uh, farm style tables as well as uh, other types of furniture so thank you pete scott dessert i think that's how you pronounce that or dissert uh, custom woodwork sent me a note and a sticker as well very interesting uh, design on the sticker so thank you scott and seth over at uh, seth um, makes stuff or stuff seth makes dot com he's also on instagram so seth sent me a note and some uh, sawdust from his shop. So I thought that was kind of uh, kind of cute there. Thanks, Seth. I appreciate the sticker. I'll get that up on the sticker cabinet. And my friend Mike Montgomery at Modern Builds. So if you're not familiar with Mike, he's really doing some neat stuff on his YouTube channel, and he's got a developing a really good following on his channel. He makes some really great videos, makes some really great furniture and pieces. Um, and yeah, it's just good stuff, so go check him out. So I'd like to say thanks to all those guys who sent me stickers this week. I'll get those up on the cabinet. If you'd like one of my stickers, uh, feel free to send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address in the About tab on my YouTube banner, and I'd be happy to drop some in the mail to you. Or you can uh, also send me uh, one of your stickers, and I'll be happy to reciprocate uh, by sending you a couple. If you like this video, please push that thumbs up button, and why not go ahead and hit subscribe? 
I will have some collaboration build projects coming up. I know people have been uh, asking about projects and so as things come together in my shop I'll be getting those uh, projects filmed and put together and uploaded for you to view as well as more shop updates, shop talks, tool segments, and organization type projects coming out in the next few months uh, throughout this year. So thank you again for your support. Thanks for watching and let's roll the sticker music.